My professional learning network covers a wide scope of activities. Obviously, I'm a professional educator and I have a people around me and people that I talk to and people that I trust and people that I value. But I believe that a personal learning network covers more than just quote unquote, that may be like our job. So for me, my personal learning network also includes uh, several of my hobbies that I'm involved in, whether it be photography or uh, other things. Um, but I believe the personal network kind of covers my entire life because um, who you network with, who you communicate with is all part of your kind of your entire who you are, who you are as a person, as an educator, as a, just a just a human being. So when I say that, I well, let's start with education. So obviously, I have a lot of connections and a lot of communication with people within my district. For example, my district has a, a tool called My CNUSD, um, where they've created an online, essentially a collaboration area that not only involves myself and other people at my school, but the whole district. It includes uh, staff, teachers, community members, students. We want everyone to have a voice and be able to communicate. You know, the more we communicate, the better better we are. And so it's, it's been an interesting tool. It's been a little bit challenging as we've implemented it to uh, get it going and get people to understand how it works. Um, but it's a it's one of the tools that we use, and, and I think it's been valuable. Um, obviously, there's Facebook, and we have our communications with Facebook. Uh, but also, you know, for me personally, I have um, my LinkedIn account, uh, and I follow several groups in that LinkedIn account. Uh, the link the LinkedIn account in and of itself is okay. It's not my favorite thing in the world. But there's a couple groups. I follow a couple groups in there. There's the K-12 BYOD or other, otherwise bring your own device group. And they have a lot of nice suggestions about how we can implement bringing your own device to school for students, for teachers, and how, and how we kind of we make that work and, and just the issues involved in um, that movement. Another group I follow there is the International Society of Technology Education. Uh, another good group that I you know, participate in and talk to and um, and it's really just a nice way for professional educators to communicate. Um, those groups uh, are extremely valuable, I think, in uh, being a part of anyone's personal learning network uh, to communicate with people across the country and even the world in our general area of expertise, which is education. And obviously, of course, we have Twitter. Um, like we learned in our lesson this week, actually, the hashtags and how to use hashtags to um, follow various um, trends or uh, issues. Uh, and and those are that's another great way to just kind of keep snippets of stuff moving on. And so you can kind of always keep abreast of what's happening. Um, so those are all great tools. Also, you know, I, I there's a lot of great blogs out there. Free Tech for Teachers, uh, Mindshift, Edutopia, and The Innovative Educator. Those are just four of some of the blogs that I uh, check out every now and then. Um, there's just a ton of great information out there um, for people to use. I, I use a great resource personally for me called Feedly where I bring all these blogs into one place and it allows me to go to one place to check out a multitude of blogs at once and see what the latest posts are and just kind of see what's going on. I use it. I use Feedly in other areas of my life as well um, as far as following various other interests, uh, but I also have an education section where I can click on that and just stay up to date on what's going on with my the education blogs and, and information that I follow. And this is a kind of a good connection with the lesson that we had this week as, or as far as the blogging and um, some valuable pieces that we can get out of that. And it's just a great way to, to follow that. So I, I use that as, as in part of my personal learning network to just stay, you know, involved with what's the latest and, and current trends. I don't I don't want to fall behind. Um, I like to stay on top of things. Some other things that I that I, I participate in not necessarily regularly, but I do is I'll listen to, occasionally I will listen to educational podcasts. If there's something out there um, in the field of education that's important, I will do a po uh, listen to a podcast perhaps, some you know obviously some YouTube videos, seeing people that demonstrate things. Um, and those are all great uh, resources that you can add into your uh, your PLN. Next, uh, you know I have a 
personal hobby of photography, um, and I'm going to bring this all around full circle here in a little bit. But so for photography, for me, it, you know, it's a it's a stress relief. It's a uh, creative endeavor that is something that I lo- and just enjoy doing, and it just keeps me connected with my creative side and away from the you know the the business day-to-day business of being an educator you know sites i use there flickr uh 500px uh tumblr my own website ronkretz.com you know i post my photography there and um i just like to communicate and talk to people about the pictures you know we talk about comments we we i post all of my pictures with the full setting so everyone sees how i shot it And I like to look at other people's shots and see how they shot them. And then I'll try new techniques. Uh, And again, this is a a great place for just lifelong learning. And I go out and I follow tutorials or listen to podcasts on photography on how to move forward and how to get better and new techniques and trends. So, uh, again, that's just a great – these are just some of the tools that I use to stay informed on that. Uh, Some other hobbies and interests that I have, you know, I love to go jeeping, jeeping. I, there's a couple web forms that I really like to follow with the Jeep, wranglerform.com, jeepform.com. And then I'm also a, uh, I am also spend a lot of time volunteering with the San Bernardino National Forest on their off-highway vehicle program. And um, so I, I use my Jeep a lot out there. Um, I make connections there with a lot of people, different people in the community all across Southern California who support the National Forest. And just it's interesting how those connections kind of work. The other radio interest I have right now is I'm doing ham radio, um, so I use sites like QRZ.com. But the most interesting part about ham radio is just the communication you can have with people all around the world. I'll be sitting there chatting with somebody, or and also I hear someone come on from Australia or from uh, England, um, all across the country, in South Carolina or, or wherever. And it's just interesting to talk to people, and you can find out what they're doing. And it's, I, you know, people ask me what I do, and oh, I'm a middle school administrator, and they start going, start asking questions. All of those are great things to do, and ways to communicate uh, with a large group of people, and to and to see where everyone's mindset is at. You know, for me, what is a professional learning network? It, it's just taking modern methods really emphasizing being lifelong learners and the most important part for me is we got it it just helps keep keeps life interesting um in what we're doing you know for me it's kind of like my little personal mantra um you know if learning is to be a lifelong adventure we got to make it interesting and exciting from the beginning we want learning to be something exciting and that's what your personal learning network is i can bring interest from photography from jeeping or any of these other interests education i can i I can bring those communities together um and when i we talk with people constantly not only am i doing say public relations for my school district if i'm out in the forest and i run into some people and we start talking and they say oh what do you do for a living and i'll start talking about my school district and and all that is kind of public relations and communication and, and getting just kind of getting the, the word out of the message out and all of that is important in kind of what we do um, the importance for me with a, a, um, a personal learning network is really that it's going to invigorate us it's going to inspire us to try new things to bring these technologies and ideas into a classroom where we can inspire young the young minds uh, sitting in front of us. Um, if we keep learning and we keep changing and we um, desire to be new and to be uh, interesting, our students will do the same thing. And I want to inspire them um, at all times. And that's why we stay connected with the people around us. We stay connected with educators. We stay connected with people in our lives. Um, we constantly strive to change, to learn, to get see what's the, just stay on top of everything, and we bring that into the classroom. And that right there is what's going to make learning um, a more successful endeavor for our students.